the Bin Laden raid just figures so largely in the mythology of the Navy SEALs, and it's like the, the apex of their achievement. But the actual accounting of what went down is like a fairly squalid and ridiculous matter that only gets even more absurd with, like I said, the competing careers of the two liars trying to cash in on their role in it. Yeah, it, it's amazing, uh, especially if you, I mean, I presume most of our listeners think this, uh, that it was basically a pheasant hunt set up by ISI. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you're going to that ranch where Dick Cheney shot the fat, like the fat <laughs> yeah, birds the, who couldn't fly. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the broken winged birds. Yeah. And, massacred. And getting into an argument with your friend over like who shot the fat bird first. <laughs> yeah. like the idea that, these guys they, are just yeah. running behind uh, up the fucking uh, stairwell. Like, like the three stooges getting caught to try to put a bullet in this <laughs> yeah. guy. So yeah, in their yeah. head at that point, like, oh man, I'm gonna get a, such a good book out of this. It's one of the most farcical, hilarious events in the history of the American Empire. Because yeah, just this sick old man and like his wives and like the guy who gets his mail all asleep yeah. and all these fucking bozos with their decades of murders and fucking training running in and be like, no, I want to buy a boat. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. No, I fucking got it. <laughs> like just yeah. roided out of their minds, you know? like just standing over the body of his wife and being like, no, I'm going to get a fucking lake house. You fucking cunt. I got him. Fuck you. Yeah, listen to this. So it says, by the time Robert O'Neill entered Osama bin Laden's bedroom in, Abbottabad, in his Abbottabad compound on May 2nd, 2011, the Al-Qaeda leader was bleeding out on the floor, possibly already dead after being shot in the chest and leg by the lead assaulter on the raid. That operator known as Red inside the unit is still an active duty member of SEAL Team 6 and has never been publicly identified. O'Neill entered the room, walked over to where bin Laden lay on the floor, and shot him twice in the face. He then stood above the now indisputably dead man and canoed him, firing around into his forehead and splitting open the top of his skull, exposing his brain. Osama bin Laden had been branded by SEAL Team 6. O'Neill has not been shy about the fact that he canoed bin Laden. His forehead was gruesome, he later told Esquire magazine. It was split open in the shape of a V. I could see his brain spilling out over his face. Um, and, 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 he, and he's bragging about this in Esquire. Um, and then it says here, two different SEALs, Robert O'Neill and Matthew Bissonette, have publicly taken credit for killing bin Laden. According to multiple sources, both of their accounts contain multiple self-serving falsehoods. The falsehoods, both significant and slight, demonstrate that, what even the, that when even conducting the most important missions, SEAL Team 6 was unable to rise above the culture of deceit, personal enrichment, and self-aggrandizement that has corrupted a fighting unit legendary for its discipline and code of honor. Well, I mean, I, I'd, ta I'd, take question with, I'd take question with that the framing of it in, in that regard. But here's, I mean, when it comes to the canoeing of bin Laden, which, uh, you know, in this article's telling of it was a absolute breach of protocol that was just a flagrant violation of their orders. And in fact, both O'Neill and Bissonette on the raid itself, by choosing to go to the third floor where his bedroom was after they hadn't even cleared the second, was like flagrantly putting their, uh, you know, teammates at risk of dying. I mean, they were just like wildly, wildly, uh, you know, flagrant violation of protocol and orders during this mission. But yeah, like you said, Matt, like the Three Stooges all trying to go through the same door at the same time, these guys knew what an opportunity it was to be the guy who killed bin Laden, and they didn't give a shit about anything else. So, then, the, and then, okay, then, yeah, putting three bullets in the head of a guy who's already dead, a little ridiculous, just to like, just be like, yep, we, we, we canoed him, brother. Hell yeah. I did that to Bin Laden. It's like, oh, well, yeah, he was already dead, dude. Big fucking deal. Um, I honestly, I had a different feeling about this, where it's like all these things about how, oh, it was a such, I mean, like this is an example of like a, just the, the way they like flagrantly violated orders on like the single most important mission in the history of the Navy SEALs. I don't know. I don't know. The fact that they um, ruined his face, shall we say, and made it like... <laughs> Like if you yeah. showed a photo of the cadaver to be like, this has been Laden, it would be a little hard. It'd be pretty much impossible for even his family members to say with any certainty, absent birthmarks or dental records, whether that was the case. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I believe this 100 percent way one or the other, but it does certainly raise my eyebrow about whether that was even Bin Laden they killed there in the first place. And just the way in which they disposed of the body, where it's like, yeah, we had to chop it up and throw it into the ocean. Yeah, no, we did it Muslim style like they like. They liked the ocean. They've always loved the ocean. Yeah, no, it raised new questions for me. I mean, I, I when I was reading the article and, you know, previously the Hirsch article, I do think it's interesting that it's a kill mission, right? 
Like this is. Oh yeah, there was there was nothing Osama bin Laden could have told us. Right, we debriefed him right. or fucking interrogated no, no, him that would be no, useful. Yeah, they. It's a kill mission um, for this guy that I feel like we pretty much know was just he was in a permanent ISI Airbnb. <laughs> you know, he wasn't fucking. Yeah, he wasn't doing anywhere. shit anymore. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. They were using they. That was like that was someone's golden ticket. Some guy made a lot off that, and probably a few guys. And for, yeah, for JSOC to be like, you know, orders down from the president, kill this guy. Don't capture him. Very interesting. But now, yeah, the added thing of the canoeing makes it more interesting. I mean, I don't think Bin Laden is out there somewhere alive. I think it's like very possible. He just like, he, I remember him, he had a kidney illness. He needed dialysis. Yeah. It's yeah. very possible he just died like sadly but in his own control like in a cave you know 12 years not ago. even in a cave probably just in a hospital or a yeah. house if that if that was if that's yeah. indeed what happened yeah and that yeah no this is just some guy that's always possible so i mean like the the official story of all this is very fishy to begin with but which makes the ludicrous lies told by these fucking <laughs> these, these fucking brand conscious fucking <laughs> navy seal killers even fucking funnier uh, it says here, quote here, uh, uh, the beauty of what they have constructed, said a former teammate, about how Bissonette and O'Neill cornered the market on the Bin Laden raid, is that there is only one guy, essentially, who can come forward and say they're lying, and he won't ever talk. <laughs> the Navy so, SEAL story, that's it. Yeah, one guy can come forward, he'll never do it. I, I, I love this entire story. I really love this entire story. Even if it really is Bin Laden, which I'm I'm now kind of 50-50 on uh, I, I love this story because, I mean, it, from all the way down, you really see, like, the gears of Empire. Because for the individual SEALs, it's like, you know, they kind of could have done this at any point. They kind of could have, you know, been given the green light to go ahead and fucking get this done and make their careers at any point. But finally, for whatever reason, whatever happens between, like, the ISI and the CIA and the president, whatever negotiation took place where Obama... He like he he's like yeah go ahead do it we have the we we have the we have we're clear and then this guy just happens to be lucky enough. There's a big thing about how O'Neill made sure that he was in that on that specific team at this time because they would be the ones that would kill Bin Laden. But then even you go all the way up for Obama for whatever reason he gets to be the president who's like oh yeah now now we can now we can do it. Now, I have I, all- I, I, I due to you know luck and history and whatever else goes on and some things that are beyond my control i get to be the guy i get to be the president who killed bin laden and at the end of the day it means nothing it's just it's just another finger on a necklace it's just another fucking stupid patch or challenge coin but that's that's how empire works that's it and whether you're whether you're starting you know your fucking racist t-shirt company or like making shitty speeches or you're making shitty speeches for two hundred fifty thousand dollars a pop. You're having your birthday party with like John Kerry and fucking Common. It, everyone, everyone is kind of doing the same thing, just hoping they get in on the right rotation of the gears on the Empire machine to make their career after it. On. 